Well, I interviewed Boosie a while back, and we talked about. Also, I had haters out there, and and it's always like that. Wherever you from, you will get hated the most. You know, most rappers die in their own city, man. It's a fact. And um, you know, you have haters who, who was in school with you, and and they mad because they was on, they was in that, in that third grade class with you, but they don't have the same hustle as you. Recently, the Chink story mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. The the, the Chink's drugs. Chink's yeah. drugs. The two guys that killed him was from his own his own area. One of them showed up to his funeral, had a R.I.P. Chink's hat on, allegedly. Like it's it was over an old grudge, you know what I'm saying? And that situation happens over and over and over and over again. Um, there was a dude named G Money from Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to interview him two days after he got killed. It was already scheduled. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's a lot of tragedy that comes from out the hood, you know. And if if you're not really the fact of who you proclaim to be, a lot of times you will become a victim in, in those same neighborhoods. You know, it's it's how you reach back and influence now you know like as i said i'm a gangster and a rapper but i'm i pride myself on being an intelligent gangster you know uh gangsters back in the days you know they weren't running around you know with, with pistols and you know shouting out where they was from and just killing people randomly and all that they was about building empires and and and, and having money and and having a good quality of life for their family and loved ones you know that's gangster to me you know what I'm saying? So my gang banging mentality evolved from me wanting to make sense of my life throughout all those years that it didn't into being a figure that can go back to that same hood that I never lost respect in, that I never been questioned in, that I never betrayed and be able to reach in there and extract good parts out of there and help build now you know, as opposed to destroying, because I did a lot of destroying. I'm from the gangbanging era, the, the the late 70s, early 80s, you know, all the way to the, through the 90s, you know, when it was nuts. It was the crack era. The crack era and beyond. Yeah. The crack and the crack baby era, almost. Right, because, right, I, I mean, I'd interviewed Freeway Ricky Ross, mm -hmm. and we talked about, and you said that, that a lot of black gangs didn't really have leadership. I, I seem to see a certain level of leadership in BMF with, with Big Meech. Was that, did they kind of break the mold in terms of? Well, how many people did Meech have? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. 10, 15, 20, 30? Seems about right. Yeah, when you talk about a Crip gang, you know, you're talking about 30,000. Right. A blood gang, you know, 40, 50,000. So it's, 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 a, it's a difference. And then, you know, each segment might have its own leader. Yeah. So who's the shot caller? So you're saying that when you look at other gangs, there's actually one person at the top who's commanding the entire operation. Yeah. And, and you, you just don't have that in black gangs from what you've seen. Mm -mm. Well, well, you have to realize he was um, arrested and convicted when... Oliver North, what was it, the 89, 88? Yeah, the, the Iran something? Contra. Yeah, the yeah. Iran, that, yeah. He, he doesn't understand gangbanging past when he was arrested besides what he experienced behind the wall, what he's seen coming behind the wall and how they were structured and how they conducted themselves and being that he was in the feds, you know, being from Cali, you get no love in the feds. You mm. get no love. I mean, you know, we... You know, we don't get along with uh, D.C., you know, and different other parts of the, other, of the country. You know, they don't like L.A. They don't like Cali. They don't like Crips. So you constantly up under this. So Bloods and Crips form alliance usually in the feds. You know what I'm saying? So he, he's not familiar with the streets and how it evolved from the time when he was selling dope. And he knew a lot of dope dealers and he knew his hood, he was, you know, he was from out the Hoover area, so he knew how they got down right there, but, you know, you can't speak from that area about the whole uh, expansion of 
you know, of the gang culture when really you weren't ever a gang member, really. Not at all. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he, he's, he, 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 he was, can't yeah. present himself as an authority on that. Yeah, Much was, love to him. That's my guy, everything. But yeah. He can't. He no, he, he was a low-key dude. Yeah. Like, in fact, a lot of people thought that he was, like, a drug addict, one of the drug addicts. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? For like, real. he dressed bummy. Oh, he was smart. He yeah, was he very was smart. Very, very much so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't have the flashy cars. Like, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. But everybody was coming to him for it. <laughs> right. Yeah.